Well, hello and good morning. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome you to another episode of Coffee, Ideas, and Connecting with Alejandro. Hello, my name is Alejandro Tornato, and I am so glad to be once again on this beautiful Saturday morning. It's 7 a.m. Eastern Time, and this is our time together. And before I do anything else, then I'm going to celebrate another time together with a good cup of coffee. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, I always enjoy a good a coffee early in the morning. Now, if you remember, on our last episode, I started a lesson on connection or the art of connecting with other people. And if you're a speaker, a trainer, a coach, connecting uh, with your clients uh, or connecting with a small group or a large audience, if you're given a keynote presentation, is without a doubt, a powerful skill worth developing and improving consistently and constantly throughout your journey. On our last episode, we started uncovering the truths about connecting based on the wonderful uh, book uh, by uh, my mentor, John Maxwell, uh, titled, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect, in which there was a real, a very real distinction between communication and connection. Now, at the same time, I said that the real power of connection is the fact that it is an influence maximizer. It, might, it, it maximizes your influence with other people. This is excellent because every time uh, we can increase our influence with others, an ordinary interaction suddenly becomes an extraordinary interaction and moves us to a higher level. Now, this is very well described in John Maxwell's definition of connection that um, I'm going to repeat again because it is worth repeating. And John says, connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in a way that it increases your influence with them. In today's episode, we will continue exploring connecting, the art of connecting with people, and we will dig into some of its characteristics. But before, I would like to share with you something, an extremely important fact, that real connecting cannot happen if you don't have the right attitude for it. You see, a positive, determined, and focused attitude is essential, is necessary for connecting to flow in a smooth and natural way. Now, in addition uh, to having the right attitude, the ability to connect with others begins with the understanding that people have value. All people have value, not just some of the ones that are close to me. This is not some people that may have value. It's not few people that may have value. But remember this, it's all people that have value, and all people are worth connecting with. 
Now, Jim Collins, uh, author of the book Good to Great, states, Those who build great companies understand that the ultimate throttle on growth for any great company is not markets, is not technology or competition or even products. It is one thing above all others. It is the ability to get and keep enough of the right people. And how do you do that? Well, by connecting effectively with people, whether it be your employees, whether it be people that you meet uh, casually. Don't just superficially communicate with them. Connect with them and you'll see a much more impactful response that you get when you connect with others. So let's get into some of the characteristics of connecting right now. And the first one is that connecting is not about me, is not about you, it is about others. Connecting is about others. Remember, when you are on stage, if you think that you are the most important person in the room, guess what? You are greatly mistaken. It is not about you. It is about the people you are communicating with. They are important. And for you to connect with them is paramount if you want success in your life as a speaker or as a trainer. Now, um, uh, of course, uh, it is very uh, important uh, for you to connect. I mean, uh, you cannot, under no circumstances, be focused and engrossed in yourself if you expect to have a chance to connect with people. Connecting is never about you or me. It is always about the person with whom we are communicating. Remember that. Um, I am sure that you heard the following. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I want to reaffirm to you that this statement holds true every single time. You see, when, when, when you are in front of an audience, uh, and, and people begin to notice that you really don't care about them, that the only person that you care about is you, they can pick that up very quickly. And they can very quickly disconnect from you. And pretty soon you'll be talking only to yourself. And that's a very sad uh, thing uh, to happen to any speaker. You see, speakers want connection. Good speakers want connection with an audience. The ones that don't care, they will be very quickly disconnected from an audience. Now, remember this. It is not the knowledge that you are willing to impart to people that's important. But it is your desire to connect and care for them that is paramount in any interaction. And people can feel if there is a connection, if there is a desire on your part to care for them. That's very important. 
Now, let me share a story uh, that happened to me a few years ago while I was still an active member of Toastmasters. And, 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 and I hope that you know what Toastmasters is all about. Um, I was a member of a local club in the Atlanta area, and I love to visit other clubs, uh, to meet new people, to network with them, and um, to increase my opportunities to speak. I mean, sometimes um, I, I was not able to speak in, at, at my own club, so I was looking for other venues where I could uh, uh, speak and continue developing uh, my uh, speaking skills. Now, uh, one time, uh, during one of my visits to another club, I met this member, and we engaged in a brief conversation. Um, after a few moments, she asked me if I would mind if uh, to, uh, to meet for lunch to talk a little bit more at length, I mean, just to get to know one another a little bit better. Um, I agreed, and, and we met for lunch. Now, then uh, she started to talk about all her achievements in Toastmasters, the leadership roles that she had, the successes that she had been responsible for, of the projects I mean that she did, the speaking competitions that she had won, and then she moved into her accomplishments outside of Toastmasters. I hope that you're getting the gist of this conversation. For about 45 minutes, it was all about her. It was all about her. A very good example of self-centeredness. Self-absorption, self-centeredness. I am the important person here. It doesn't matter too much about you. Now, it gets, uh, it gets better. Um, about five minutes before we finished our lunch and we were ready to just leave, she looked at me and she said, Oh, by the way, why don't you tell me a little bit about you? <laughs> now, that is interesting because this example demonstrates very clearly the complete opposite of connecting. You see, when you are so, so self-absorbed, in, in in you, in your own achievements, in how great you are, then what do you think that the other person is experiencing at that time? I mean, what, what, what do you think that they are, what is the impression that you are bringing forth? Not a very good one. It's okay. I mean, why did you invite me for lunch if you're going to? I mean, you could have given me a. I mean, you could have called me on the phone and you could have told me how great you were and then hung up because, I mean, you, you were not really interested in getting to know me. What you wanted is you uh, to get to know me as opposed to me getting to know you and that is not connection or connecting in any way so don't do it be interested in people care for them let them know that you want to get to know them as people as human beings because you know that they have value, that they are valuable to you, and that they are worth you getting to know them. That's one of the secrets of connecting. 
Now let's go into uh, number two. Connecting is more than just words. Connecting is more than just words. Uh, two professors at the univer at, at, at uh, any university can give the same class with the same content using the same resources, using the same textbook, and students will flood into one of the professor's classes while the second professor's class is almost empty. Two speakers can give a presentation to an audience. In one case, the audience is very much interested and some people are sitting on the edge of their seats. In the other case, the people in the audience seem absent-minded and completely disconnected. Now, these two examples show that in order to connect with others, words are not enough. As a matter of fact, real connection can be established without any words being spoken. If we turn to statistics, we will find that what we say accounts for only 7% of what is believed. Only 7%. The way we say it accounts for 38%. And what others see accounts for 55%. Therefore, based on these numbers, more than 90% of the impression we often convey has nothing to do with what we actually say. Now, please, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that words are not important because as a speaker and trainer myself, I know and I understand the real power of words, either to build up or to destroy. Words have very strong power and very real power. However, connecting with people requires more than that, it requires, as a matter of fact, three very powerful components. And I'll give them to you right now. The first one is thought. Thought. Something that we know. The second, emotion. That is, that is a real good one. Emotion. Something we feel. And the third one, is action, something we do. So again, thoughts, something we know, emotion, something we feel, action, something we do. Now, these three essential components should be present in order to connect with people. Failure to include any one of these three and there will be a disconnection from people and a breakdown in communication. I truly believe that we can visualize connecting as a highway that stretches from our heart to the heart of the person or persons with whom we are communicating with and where not only words can flow freely back and forth on that highway, but emotions can also flow without interruption. And that is the power of connecting. is not just the words we say, but the emotions that we feel and that we convey and transfer to other people that helps us to connect effectively. Uh, Maya Angelou, uh, the great uh, author 
And I truly believe, I mean, she was a philosopher. I mean, she was a great thinker. Um, she said something, I mean, a quote that, or a statement that really stuck with me and, and made a great impact in my own life. She said, people will most likely forget what you said or what you did. But they will never, ever forget how you made them feel. And that is the component of emotion. When you connect with people, not at an intellectual level, but at an emotional heart-to-heart -heart level, then you are definitely and most certainly connecting with them. So how very important that quote really is. Not only it contains precious words, but a strong and a deep emotion. Now, thank you so very much for uh, sticking and staying with me. I really had a great time connecting with you this morning. And um, uh, this is our second part in this journey on connection or the art of connecting. And I think uh, that I would like to do uh, a third one. On, on connecting because there there are a few uh, a few more nuggets that I would like to share with all of you so um, wait for that uh, have a great rest of the day and as I always end my broadcasts encouraging encouraging you to be kind be passionate be well.